talent. I mean, how clear have I got to make it to Mick and Alex? You know, it's the first solid loop we've had in about nine months. I need the evidence ASAP, and they're dicking around playing lifesavers. Oh, fate conspires, doesn't it? Anyway, Jack, are you calling me to let off steam, or is your radio busted and you're bored, or what? Tell me. That radio is not busted. It's perfect. Is he there yet, or what? Look, the MOs of those three boat explosions... Yeah. Yeah, I was really busy. I just forgot. I left them on my desk. Can you have them faxed up to the Port Bly police station? OK, they'll be waiting for uh, you Helen, at Port Bly. You... Tell him not to reprogram it, all right? I don't want him to touch the radio. Uh, OK, they'll be waiting for you at Port Bly, and Jeff says do not reprogram the radio. Ask Jeff which brass he had to do to get a good car like this. Says he wouldn't dream of it. Helen, he, he, he's using the hands free, isn't he? Uh, Jack. Oh, come on. What's Jeff think? I am a total moron. Yeah? Bye. Yeah, I okay, will see you. Oh. Yeah, this is the country, all right. But they still give way to the right. It's a pain in the ass, isn't it? What is that, Ed? Not I'm blind or I don't know the road rules. Or if all else fails, at least you could say, I'm sorry. Oh, what's that they say about coppers? There's always one around when you need one. All right. Ah, Senior Sergeant. Did you happen to witness this woman run into me? You finished your mobile telephone conversation before the accident, didn't you, sir? I'm sorry. Facing a southerly direction, I had cause to notice you driving in a northerly direction while speaking on a mobile telephone. It's an offence under the Australian road rules. On the phone, eh? I'm Detective Jack Christie, Sydney Water Police. Do you want to book this woman and I'll be on my way? Acting Inspector Julia Goodwin. Sorry to pull rank. Book him and I'll be on my way. You're the Sergeant Bock from Port Bly. Now, I'm the Jack Christie from Sydney. I phoned you this morning. You've got Dennis Dugdale in cells, and I want to interview him, OK? Uh, yeah. Well, he's still in the cells. OK, so uh, you haven't put uh, Dugdale up in front of the magistrate on your charges yet? Nope. I'll be needing to interview him too, Senior Sergeant. What, you want to interview Dugdale as well? Regarding what? Can I get a lift with you back to Port Bly? Yes, yeah, same. I'm not going back to Port Bly. Besides, somebody's got to stay here with the towies. You can direct traffic around that mess. He is so going back to Port Ply. I knew he didn't want me up here, right? I could tell over the phone. <laughs> Just hold it, please. Slow it down. Thank you. Have a nice day. He wants him remanded here, so I can't take him back to Sydney. What's your interest in Dennis Dugdale? Well, what's yours? Mind your own business. So, what are you saying? Window locks instead of an alarm? Oh, no one really pays attention to alarms. You know, they can go off for no reason. Ah, uh, security bars and the windows are the go-go. Oh, yeah, and they look so stylish, Matthew. Hey, Matthew, you owe me ten bucks. You forgotten? Hey, you owe me a twenty-two, pal. I forgot hey. about that. Payday. Payday. Can we get Payday. on with this, Come please? On. Yes! Michael! 
What? What's your problem? I don't have a problem, Alex, all right? What's going on? Nothing. You just get out of bed the wrong side of your head. Of course Dennis Dugdale works here. OK, can you help us with his whereabouts, sir? Oh, he's having a couple of days away fishing. I had a port fly. Oh, I don't know, could be. Are you all right? Uh, last night he was arrested. He was on a boat moored at Port Bly Jetty. Now, this boat, it wasn't his, and uh, we found explosive devices in his possession. Bullshit. He's currently in custody of the Port Bly Watch House, Mr Marks. Mr Marks, are you looking for someone? Yeah, my daughter Mary. She's married to Dennis. They both work here. She was around a minute ago. Mary will tell you. That's all bullshit. So you might be aware there's been three boats blown up on Sydney Harbour over the past eight months. Can you help us establish your son-in-law, Mr Dugdale's whereabouts at the time of those three explosions? Help? What, what sort of help? OK, what about your daughter? Does she have a mobile phone? Maybe we can contact her. Phone, yeah. yeah she, one of them phones, she's got one. Have you got her phone number? Oh, cripes, the car's brand new. I, I think it's in everyone's best interest that the boss isn't included in this particular information loop, if you get my drift. Mmm, subterfuge. Uh, I agree, Sergeant. He throw a mental and he's not particular about who his mentals hit. I'll have it attended to in Port Vi and he'll never know. Imbecile, is he? OK, are there any procedures I need to follow? Tell the truth. Any forms I need to fill in? That's sort of... I honestly don't know, Sergeant, but I can check the handbook and get back to you if you like. Is that Sergeant Christie? Can I have a word? No, um, not Sergeant Christie. Another Sergeant. Excuse me, I need to go wee. Excuse me, have you reported your accident yet? Uh, no. No, I haven't. Does this thing go any faster? Nah. Oh, yeah, look, uh, any time this week would be fine, Cliff, any time. And good luck with the missus, too, huh? I'd give you this truck a wash, Cliffy. Might want to jump in yourself. Well, you took your time. Well, I suppose you put Dennis Dugdale up in front of the magistrate, eh? Hey? I suppose you're going to have a problem with me interviewing him, yeah? No. He's in here. All that energy expended angsting he was plotting against you. Just a silly misunderstanding, Dad. Nothing to worry about. And that's the truth. No right to upset my father like that. He's an old man. I'm sorry, Mrs. Dugdale. It couldn't be helped. So you've already spoken to your husband? Yeah, he called me this morning. He said he stopped overnight at Port Bly on his way up the coast. He loves boats. He saw an interesting one moored at the jetty. He admits he shouldn't have gone on board sticky picking, but he did. Somebody saw him, apparently. Called the police. They arrested him. He had explosives, a timer and detonator in his possession. OK? He said they were already on the boat. He found them. He's already told the Port Bly police this. Yeah, I I'm sure he has. Um, we need to know his whereabouts when each of the three boats were blown up on Sydney Harbour. Oh, for goodness sake. Why? Well, it's possible that the explosions were an insurance scam and it's possible that your husband was hired to blow them up. My husband couldn't blow up a balloon. I'm Detective Sergeant Jack Christie, Sydney Water Police, Mr Dugdale. 
I'm a long way from home, I know, but back in Sydney, we've got an ongoing investigation into three boat explosions over the past eight months. No, sorry. Big button? No. I don't have to talk to you. I don't want to. Well, that's your prerogative, Mr. Dugdar, but it would help our investigations if you did. No, I can't trust you. I'm sorry, what? He doesn't trust me. I mean, that's what this is about, isn't it? Huh? You want him dealt with here, so you get the big tick in your book. So what are the chances of interviewing Dennis Dugdale with regard to my matter, Sergeant? I don't think that's out of the question. I just want my charge dealt with first, if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely not, sir. Oh, we done brown nosing, are we? So, Sergeant, how much time have I got before Dugdale comes up in front of the magistrate on your charges? Well, didn't I tell you, Kevin's been called away, so he's not going to be back till this afternoon. Oh, Kevin, Kevin the magistrate. No, you didn't tell me. And I suppose you'll have a problem with me viewing your evidence, will you? The, uh, you know, the explosives, the detonators, the timers. It's not a problem. Oh, there's got to be a catch somewhere. What about the owner of the boat that Dugdale was found on? Have you got a problem pointing me in their direction? Not a problem. OK, let's go for the trifecta then. I need some wheels. Got a spare one? Or can you arrange something? Now you've got a problem. Yeah. Oh, you're, yeah, you're a little champion, Donna. <laughs> yeah, I'll screen all calls. Back. Where would we be without that mobile phone? I thought I'd lost you on the last hill. Those early morning laps aren't for nothing. Do you plan to haunt me everywhere I go? Nope, only this far. My blood's screaming for caffeine. How about you? No, thanks. So, uh, Mrs. Richards, is there any reason why anyone would want to destroy your boat? You know, any grudges, any monies owed? Look, I've already been through this with Sergeant Bock. There's no reason. I don't even know this Dennis Dugdale. I've never seen him before. It's obviously off his head, you know, some sort of pyromaniac. Yeah, yeah, possibly, or else he's an operative in a series of insurance scams, you know, a destroy boat, owner collects. Is there an implication in there? No, no, no way. No, it's just keeping you up to speed on that. Are you working with Sergeant Bock? No, no, against. Well, I'll deal with Sergeant Bock, thanks. Nice talking to you. Oh, my own private little barnacle. Thanks. Good Christian upbringing. I admire the delicacy of your interview technique. Come on. Here she comes, here she comes. Mrs. Garland, you didn't answer my question. And I told you, the boat belonged to Henry, my late husband. I never went near it. <laughs> so if he towed it to the uh, Marks Marina two days before it blew up, that was his business. I, I asked you, did he sail with anyone? Is there someone else we can talk to? Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> It's my mind. I must have been practising my breathing rhythms. Um, no. No, he didn't sail with anybody. Um, sailing was his escape for me. The first yacht was at Mark's Marine, just before it blew up. Now, the owner is out of the picture, quite literally. He died of a heart attack the day after it happened. Shock, probably. Uh, the widow, she knows nothing, although she is learning how to scoop dive. I gotcha. So, there's no connection between Mark's Marine and either of the other two boats? No, nothing, nothing so far. Right. OK, can you check out a boat owner up here? Her name's Miranda Richards. She runs Miranda's Dolphin and Whale Watching Tours. Yeah, her bank statements, financials, that sort of thing. 
Jack, I'm going to need a warrant for that. Well, Doug Dart was found on her boat. She could have been planning to do an insurance scam. So that should be sufficient grounds, eh? OK, OK, I'll see what I can do. Now, listen, before you go, Donna has mentioned the little car problem. What? Oh, no. Settle down, Jack. She was struggling with the burden of knowledge. And, frankly, I don't fancy being collateral damage when the boss finds out, so if I were you, I would be monitoring all my calls. Hey, hey, listen. Yeah, my mobile's going down. I forgot to bring the charger. Yeah, just hang on. Have you got a mobile phone? What's the number? Hang on. Yeah, got that. No, not a word. OK, bye. Bye. Um, I think that's possibly Sykes and his brand new domestic alarm system. 100% guaranteed never to trigger accidentally. He got it off the home shopping channel. Don't tell him to do it. Oh. <laughs> hey, it works! Yeah, right, huh? Hello, Sykes! 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 Sir? Get yourself a dog. What do you mean we're not fronting the magistrate? You said it was this afternoon. Well, now he's not available till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Look, Sergeant, I have absolutely no desire to stay here overnight. Please, can I interview Dennis Dugdale? Sure. Just as soon as my charges against him are dealt with. Right. And I, uh, I suppose you're going to honour the old tradition of supplying, you know, food and accommodation to visiting members. Oh, gee. Look, it's 4.30 and I've got the darts match. I'll see you in the morning. Then I presume I'll see you in the morning too. L uh, listen, uh, can I borrow your mobile phone? I, I just, you know, I need to, I need to call them to tell them I won't be home tonight. I have money. Hello. I'll put my head in at the Chinese. Me too. And the Indian. There's no Indian. There's an Indian. That's in the second street of the two-street town. Dennis Dugdale can sleep well tonight. Two messages for you. Helen says the timer and the detonator are both of a kind last imported five years ago and she's already on the track of the importer. Mm -hmm. And Donna says, according to the handbook, you're up there without a paddle. The boss has to report the accident for insurance purposes, which means you have to fly back to Sydney and then come back again to close your car. All on the boss's budget. Uh, Pleasure. Look, I'm thinking the steak's probably safest and the house red. My bad-tempered husband here, who beats me, by the way, and the children, will probably have the same. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's fine. All right, can you be finished by 7.30? <laughs> Hang on, it's, it's ten past now. I want to shut up. I'm in the semis for the darts comp. Well, then... <laughs> OK, then why did you open it in the first place? We're open because everyone round here knows I'm in the semis for the darts comp, so they know not to come in. What you doing? First light's gone out. Well, stop it. I'm going to finish this. Right? <laughs> so am I if it kills me. Look, it probably will. We're out of wine. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my wife. Who never bathes herself, let alone the children, would like another couple of bottles of this. Thanks. <coughs> She's turned all the bloody lights off. She's headed off to darts. I do believe she's more perverse than we are. No, no. No, I'm more perverse than her, or you, or anyone in the world. On the other hand, you and I, right? aren't altogether entirely different. Don't you think you come close to my level of innate charm and sophistication? There has to be a bar open somewhere. To the bar. Hmm? To the bar? 
Reckon the accommodation around here is as crap as the food. Could have many bars. <laughs> Not a good bet. It's worse than the crap food. Crap end to a crap day. Mm. Apart from the wine. Apart from the wine. I wonder mm -hmm. if we were to have sex, do you think it would be as Crap as the food or as good as the wine? Well, only idiots die wondering. Good morning. Sorry to bother you. It's Sergeant Hill and Blake Moore here, Sydney Water Police. I left a message on your phone yesterday for Detective Sergeant Christie. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. He, he, he got the message. Oh, look, thanks for that. Um, it's Julia, isn't it? Uh, from the name on your voicemail. Uh, yes. Yep. That's right. Um, <clears throat> Helen? Yeah, hi. Look, um... I'm wondering if you can actually give him another message for me. I could, if I see him. Mm. I haven't got the faintest idea where he is right now. Mm. Right. Actually, it might be better if you just get him to call me as soon as possible, and I will try not to bother you again. No, no bother. If I see him, I'll... <clears throat> mm. Thanks. Yep. Bye, Helen. Good night. Thanks a lot. Bye. Oh, God. Oh, holy giraffe. Oh. I haven't the faintest idea what came over me either. Ring Helen. Mm -hmm. She said as soon as possible, but I'd leave it 20 minutes because I don't know where you are. Good morning, Sergeant. Thanks very much. Why are there two? Well, isn't he hungry? Eggs and bacon, tea and toast, all right with you, Sergeant? I had a bet with Merv the publican. He said you wouldn't. But I know coppers better than Merv. Apart from that, both your cars are buggered. Garo says it'll take two days. Magistrate hearings at 9.30. Here's your bill from last night's tea. Thanks, Sergeant. Insufficient evidence to remand him to Sydney. I mean, no wonder the dickhead is a country magistrate, you know? Your evidence was circumstantial. Oh, thanks for that. Um, you know, you do what you can with what you've got. But now he's remanded here, of course, you'll be able to interview him and then... You'll be nicking off. Mm. I will be. Well, about, um, about last night. Okay. No hard feelings. Not a one. 
sober, I might have vaguely contemplated the idea. Oh, sober? They would have had to stop me with an ice pick. I'm on it. Ah, oh, still, hasn't been a totally wasted trip. You got to test drive at Port Blaine this spring? <clears throat> Sergeant, now your charges with Mr. Dugdale have been dealt with, can I interview him and get out of here? Look, I judge people by the urges they resist. Call me Methodist, but you don't rate in my book. I'll call you wanker. Join the club. How the hell do I get to interview Dugdale? I got a deal, right? No strings. You help me nail Dugdale, you get first interview. Right? Yeah. Fish are out of there. Mrs. Cartland, you didn't answer my question. I was asking you about uh, Cartland Incorporated. Well, I told you I inherited it from my late husband. Okay, are you aware that you are the sole importer of a timer and detonator found on a person planning to destroy a boat at Port Bly? Oh, no, sorry, I didn't know that. I'm not really with it. I'm, I'm trying to perfect my fin pivot. We, we also suspect the same person of destroying your husband's yacht eight months ago. Now, do you see the coincidence here? Probably, yes. It all sounds so terribly Henry. I do wish he was still with us so you could bother him. <laughs> Alex and Mick say that the widow Cartland's genuinely ignorant or she's performing like a trooper. Yeah, well, we just have to work out whether she or the late hubby actually bought these timers and the detonators. OK, well, they're checking out the yacht clubs now to see if he was a member. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I'll talk to you. Hang on, whose phone are you what? on? What, this phone? Uh, yeah, I... <coughs> yeah, I, I just ran into the owner. What, a local? Yeah. yeah, she's a local, yep. So there is she? She owns the fish shop. Good eye. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I'll see you. Not a sign of her. Hangover doesn't seem to affect your performance. Plenty of practice. Oh. Is that her out there? Having a paddle? Gotta love the skirt, should be standard issue. Oh, Mrs. Bright. Richards! Drink it. Fantastic. Wait, it Mrs. Richards? It'll be over in 20 minutes. 20 minutes? What's going to happen in 20 minutes? <laughs> What's the matter? What's up? <laughs> Mrs. Richards, will you, will you get up now, please? Please? Come on. Come on, Mrs. Richards. <laughs> Hang on. She's not moving. Something's holding her down. Here we go. Oh, I'm so into this today. I'm so into it. This is work, work. This is what's going to happen in 20 minutes. The tide comes in. When did he smash my car? Yesterday, sir, but it's not completely smashed, just a bit dented. Mud. Why are you telling me this? Why isn't Christy telling me this? Did you know about this? Uh, yes, I became aware of it. Well, why is Donna telling me? She has her reasons. Oh, I see. That's why you were hunting through the handbook. Well, I could save you the trouble, I can tell you. I have to pay for his airfare back here, and then I have to pay for it to come to go back again. Excuse me, Chief. Yeah, our scuba diving widow. She's a little more shrewd than Dottie. Her husband did belong to a yacht club. Yeah, the night his boat went up, Henry Carton was blind drunk, swearing that his wife had it blown up. As wives do. Oh, she just discovered that he was having an affair. As husbands do. I think we're going to need a little more than hearsay. <clears throat> Thanks. OK, Miranda, come on. Let's keep this going, eh? Time is of the essence here, right? 
Now, you hurl if you want to, but let's keep this going. Oh, you're so Sydney, uh, aren't you? Right, come on. Now, you started trading shares on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't think there's anything left. I thought I could get the business going again. Stuff my husband. Let him run off with the Dutch backpacker with the 34D tits. But I lost a mozza. And then yesterday I realised you were on to me. And today I was so beautifully pissed. I thought I'd solved all my problems forever. OK, who put you on to the insurance scam? Some Sydney yachty came through. He said the word in Sydney was that there was some guy who specialised in causing accidents for insurance purposes. I had to put an ad in, a coded ad in the yachting monthly yep. classifieds and Dennis Dugdale called me. Donna rang with details of your flight back. I'm not leaving until I interview Dennis Dugdale. What do you say, Ray? You want to impede this investigation just one little bit more and really piss me off? BKG Sydney Water Police to Police Launch Nemesis. Where are you, Sykesy? Yeah, this Police Launch Nemesis. We're up. We're just up fucking in. We've had a report of a suspicious person on a yacht at Putney Moorings. Could you check it out? See anything suspicious? What does suspicious look like? I don't see anything. Did you get home for that boat? Nope. I'll go down the bow just in case. Right on. Hey, Matt! Matt! There's someone over there! Doesn't look like a kid. Ask her if she's seen anything. Excuse me! Excuse me! Have you seen anything? Wasting all our time, Mr. Dugdale. Miranda Richards has dubbed you in. You're the one that answered the coded ad she placed in the yachting monthly classifieds. I'm not saying anything. What do you say, Ray? Have you got a problem with me putting Mr. Dugdale back in front of the magistrate first thing tomorrow morning? Excuse me, Alex and Claire, for you. Well. Dugdale's wife's been injured trying to blow up a yacht. When? Yes, yeah, sometime this evening, believe it or not. No, she couldn't have. We've got the bomber here. Gavin and Matt were there when it happened, Jack. They nearly went up in the explosion. What? Well, from what they've told us, they were very lucky. Well, how are the boys now? Um, well, Matthew, he's a little banged up, and, and Sykes's ears are ringing. Well, you know, more than usual. Dugdale and his wife must have been doing the jobs together. Well, if she and the husband were working as a team, she was the inept half of it. I mean, she nearly killed herself. I don't get it. Uh, I know. It doesn't make sense. I'm afraid your wife hasn't regained consciousness yet. 
What was she doing there? Why was she there? Well, that's what we want to know. Did you work as a team? <laughs> she had nothing to do with it. No, that was your job, wasn't it? Blowing up boats. You blew up the three boats in Sydney Harbour, didn't you? The only bank accounts I hadn't checked were Mark's Marine. Now, see the incoming lump sums I've circled here? They're consistent with the dates of all three boat explosions. These lump sums go out again a couple of days later. Yeah, he wrote out checks. He afraid of copies of the same. Have a look at the signature and who they're all made out to. Yep, yeah. hello, Blackmore. Helen? Yeah, it's me. Listen, hold on to your hat. None of the Dugdales blew up any of those three boats. Yeah, that's what we think, Jack. We think it was Mary Dugdale's father, Arthur Marks. But how did you know that? Dennis Dugdale just told me. Well, lump sums came into his cheque account on the appropriate dates and he also wrote cheques out for the same amount to Neptune's Vista Retirement Village. The car. OK, I'll send Alex car. and... Um, Alex and Mick to pick him up now. OK, bye. Sorry, the car. The car. Sorry. Right. I'm having Dugdale remanded back to Sydney in the morning. You know that. And I'm counting the days till you fly down to give evidence as the arresting officer. And you'll be on my patch. And I can show you the sort of hospitality that you've shown me. I gotta check the river heights. I gotta phone them in. You do. Finally, I get to interview Dugdale, and it's a complete waste of time. Ah, you win some. You lose some. <sighs> Mind if I take your flight back to Sydney? No. I'm staying over to put Dugdale back in front of the magistrate. In one of those crappy rooms? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to go back to terrorise the waitress from hell. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. Look, let's just remember it as one of those things. You're a bloody romantic. Mr. Marx. Mr. Marx. Uh, Mr. Marx, there's no need to write anything down. We will be taking a statement. This has nothing to do with you. This is to Mary and Dennis to say sorry. They ruined their lives for this stinking business. It's eaten it all. I. House, my super. <laughs> Lots of luck. So blowing up boats became a source of income, Mr. Marx. Mm. It paid well. Except I damn near blew myself up the last time. Dennis took on the Port Bly job. And then Mary decided to try and throw you lot off the scent. Now they're both stuffed forever on my account. Oh, would you break the law to help out a family member? I don't know. How about you? Uh, um, well, I reckon you'd be tempted. Yeah, it's only human nature, eh? Hey, Mick, I've got some more I want, huh? <laughs> Let's quit this touchy-feely stuff, OK? Huh? I'm OK till you touch me. I can be near you, but no touching, Alex. Yeah, OK, got it. Yeah, well, you know, we've got to work together, so we better work this out, because if we can't, then... Uh... my problem. 
Oh, Sergeant, welcome back. Listen, thanks for all your help about the car business. You were just, it was just fantastic. <laughs> what is that? Sorry, Jack, it's a sense plan. Part of Gav's ongoing quest for the perfect alarm system. Not that he'd be able to tell if it's working anyway, because his ears are still yeah, ringing. Right, oh, right. Sorry, sir. It's a bit of a couple of days. It's still in the silent. I've got it, sir. Oh, Jack. I wonder if you could pencil half an hour into your busy schedule at some point. A meeting, my office, vis-a-vis -vis my car, damage to the same, lack of personal report, re-same. I've got a pocket full of receipts here, Jeff. you know? Reimbursements and get a bit slack. I was just wondering if you'd give it your personal attention. There's just no shame, oh. is there, Jack? Oh, Jack, I take it you've met Acting Inspector Julia Goodwin in Port Lyon? I spoke to her on her mobile, if you remember, and you told me she ran the fish shop. Anyway, she's in the midst of a multiple homicide, okay? It's shifted locally, and I want you to look after her, okay? 